Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. I've talked before about how the police don't have to tell you why they pulled you over. Uh, and in fact, they can tell you um, later why you've been arrested, but they don't have to tell you why you're being arrested at the moment of your arrest. People don't like that, but it's true. Well, someone asked me recently, Steve, are the police legally allowed to lie to you during an investigation? And of course, the answer to that is yes, they are. The Supreme Court has said they can. A case called Frazier v. Cup from 1969. Now, I'm not going to dwell on that case because that case, they didn't get into the nuances of it. They simply said, well, police are allowed to lie. There's nothing that prohibits them from lying during an investigation. So um, uh, I was doing research on this, and I ran across a website by an attorney out of California named Nicholas Moore. Nicholas J. Moore. And he wrote a really good article. I'll link to it below. Called, Can Police Lie to You? And he says, yes, they can. And he lays out 10 examples of lies they tell, which are fairly common for them to use during investigations. And most people, when they hear this, they go, really? But some you've heard of, some you've not. But then he gives the cases and the actual names of the cases so you can look them up if you want to, just to make sure you can keep them honest, you know? So here are a variety of examples, again, from Nicholas Moore's list. Can police lie to you? And the answer is yes, they can. Number one. Police can lie about having physical evidence. They can tell you they found your fingerprints, for instance. We got your fingerprints in the scene. Do you want to just tell us what you did now? We've got your DNA. It's all over the victim. Want to tell us what happened? Well, first of all, be aware that fingerprints and DNA take time, so the odds of them getting those in a recent crime scene are pretty slim. But there's an example called Oregon versus Mathiason, where a defendant voluntarily came to the police station, told he was not under arrest, but they told him that they'd found his fingerprints at the scene, which was not true. He then confessed to taking property, which was upheld on appeal, even though the police lied to him. Uh, the 6th Federal District Court described the practice of police lying about having DNA, a regrettable but frequent practice, which is not unconstitutional. And there they cited a California case called People v. Jones, which allow police deception as long as it is not unlikely to produce an untruthful confession. Um, it allows police deception as long as it is not unlikely to produce an untruthful confession. <laughs> Number two, police can trick you into giving up your own DNA. So you sit down, they go, oh, you want something to drink? If you say yes and you take a glass of water from them, they can then take the glass of water out and test it for DNA. They don't need to get a search warrant for that because you gave it to them voluntarily. If you are arrested for a felony or a violent crime, a DNA swab is now part of the normal booking routine However, the police may also try and trick you into surrendering your DNA by offering you a soda, a cup of water, or coffee. A positive DNA match to an active crime scene is usually enough for an arrest and a charge. Police are even allowed to go through your garbage to obtain your DNA. Uh, however, it should be noted that these DNA tests still take time and are usually performed off-site. So keep that in mind with number one. They can lie to you about having your DNA, but they can also trick you into giving it to them. Three, police can give fake tests to prove you're guilty. So they can tell you that you failed a polygraph. They can tell you you failed a chemistry, a chemical test. And they can even give you something that looks like a test and they go, oh, you failed it. Just to trick you into saying something. Uh, there's a true story here. A, sus a suspect was requested to take a polygraph and the police hooked him up to a fake polygraph. During the, question, uh, during the questioning, the suspect denied any involvement in the crime, but then the police showed the defendant a fake graph from the fake machine, and they told him that they knew he was lying. Does he want to change his answers now? And there, of course, he admitted he was lying and present at the crime scene. And the court ruled that the defendant's admission was voluntary and admissible as a confession, even though he'd been tricked into making it. Uh, it's a case from 2009 called Peoples versus May. And he gives another example uh, where detectives sprayed a defendant's hands with soap and patted them with a paper towel. They then used a field test kit used for testing substances suspected of being cocaine. And they did this when they were trying to test to see if he'd fired a gun. And they lied to him and said, yeah, this test came back, shows you fired a gun recently. People versus Smith in 2007. And uh, it was apparently upheld on appeal. Number four, police can lie to you about having eyewitnesses. An eyewitness identified you leaving the scene. We've got a witness who places you there. Well, true story, defendant was brought to a police station and advised of his Miranda rights. He waived the rights, gave a statement, and then asked for an attorney. As the detectives picked up their books to leave the room, a detective told the defendant that a victim identified a picture of the defendant as the one who stabbed and raped her. 
At the time, the victim had not seen any photographs. They just made that up. The defendant subsequently confessed in a case called People v. Dominic, 1986, upheld on appeal. The police can lie about recording your conversation, and this one should be very, very troubling to all of us, as it troubles me. They can actually say, I'm returning this recorder off, this is just between you and me, or this is off the record. There's nothing requiring a police officer to disclose the presence of an already activated tape recorder. In fact, there may be more than one recording device in the room, and police may turn off one device and say, this is just between us, or this is off the record. When speaking to the police, there's no such thing as off the record. In this case called People v. Sims 1993 out of California. So again, you know, the police will often question you over a long period of time, try to break you down, and then they'll often do the good cop, bad cop, where the good cop's going to be your buddy. Just go, look, I'm, the other guy, dude, get out of the room. You get out of the room. I want to talk to this guy alone for a second. Dude, I'm your friend. Let's tell me what happened. This is off the record, just between you and me. <laughs> it's a cop. Police can lie about having an accomplice's confession. Think about this one. Your friend sold you out and told us everything. It's a common one what they'll say is they arrest three people and they immediately separate all three of them. And they go into each one individual and they go, look, the other two guys are blaming you. A, B, C. B and C say you did it. They say you did it alone. It's all on you. Those two guys are going to say you did it by yourself and they saw you do it. Now, do you want to tell, tell us what happened? You go, no, I want to talk to an attorney. And you clam up. They go into B and they go, dude, A and C both say you did it. They're going to testify against you. They both signed sworn statements right now. Um, in fact, we just let him go. He's, he's going home now. He says, you did it. And we think you did. And oh, you're not going to talk? Fine. They go into C. One of these three people is going to break using that, that technique. Um, the police are permitted to lie and tell you that your accomplice confessed. Often this is used to extract minor details such as your location at certain times, little things that are used to build a case. Police will say, just tell us where you met your friend or how long were you hanging out. And while these questions seem innocent, your answers are confessions to those facts. True story. Detectives could place both Frazier and his cousin at a bar where a victim was last seen alive. Both Frazier and the cousin were arrested and police lied to Frazier during the interview that his cousin confessed and told him everything. Frazier only made statements that he and his cousin were at the bar, and those statements were used to convict him. And that's Frazier versus Cup, the U.S. Supreme Court case I told you about earlier, 1969, 394 U.S. 731. The police will try to imply that your refusal to cooperate will be damaging to your case. We know what happened, but if you obstruct our investigation, a DL, DA will be t- tougher on you. Uh, that above statement is not a lie, per se. But you can be criminally charged for obstructing an investigation, but the way they often phrase it is how they're trying to scare you. Obviously, you don't know anything or you didn't do it. You can say, I don't know anything and I didn't do it. That's not obstructing an investigation. That's the truth, okay? What most people don't know is that the police do not charge you the crime. Only the district attorney does that. The police are just supposed to hold you and get as much information as they can to convict you. So that's their job. Often the DA does not know anything about the case. So the idea that, oh, we've already talked to DA and he thinks you did it. Huh? (laughs) So uh, when a DA reads the file for the first time, one of the key pieces of evidence they're looking for is if you made any statements that makes their job easier. Uh, United States versus Santos Garcia, for instance, noted that raised voices and suggestions on how to gain leniency do not render a confession involuntary. Okay? Eight, police can lie about what will happen to other people. And this one's troubling. Your friend is going to go to jail for life unless you tell us what happened. Now, there is a distinction. The police cannot threaten your family members, but they can lie to you and say that your friend will go to jail for the rest of his or her life. Uh, If they threaten a family member with harm or removal from the home, that's borderline. That's where they might get in trouble. But the courts do permit a number of coercive tactics Threatening your family is considered a type of threat that is possibly going to produce a false confession. So they they will actually draw the line there. The courts will. But a threat by police to arrest or punish a close relative or a promise to free the relative in exchange for a confession may render the admission invalid, but it doesn't apply to friends, neighbors, countrymen. It's only close relatives. So they can actually tell you that, yeah, your buddy there is going to go to prison for life. 
for life unless you tell us what happened. Number nine, they will lie about wanting to help you out. This is a common one. We know what happened. And the best thing here is for you to tell us how we can write this up in your favor. And we're, tr- we're trying to help you out here. Or we've got enough evidence to charge you. But until we hear the story from you, it's going to be very one-sided. Maybe you should tell us what happened and we can help you out here. Um, keep in mind, again, that the police don't charge you with a crime. The DA does that. Uh, and so the hardest cases to prosecute are the ones where the defendant says nothing. The less you say to the police, the better off you are at avoiding a charge. Uh, talking to the police only makes it more likely that charges will be filed. But here's the example he gives. And again, these are all from uh, Nicholas Moore, who's the attorney who put this together in a very, very good article. Uh, defendant and his accomplice were wanted for murder. Officers already had a full confession from the accomplice who stated that the defendant was the killer. Police lied and told the defendant they have enough evidence to charge him with murder. The defendant told the police his friend actually did the murder and his statements were used against him to place him at the crime scene. So notice he thought he's going to exonerate himself by saying he did it. I know he did it. But the only way he could know he did it is if he was there. And say, like, okay, well, you admit you were there now. A defendant was ultimately convicted of murder. When the police will tell you they will help you out, they are lying. Their only job is to investigate a case. They're not there to help you out. So this comes from a case called People versus Garul from 2002. Again, a California case. And then finally, this is the one that scares most people. Police may ignore your request for a lawyer. The police may request, may ignore your request for a lawyer. We all know that if you want a lawyer, you can ask for a lawyer, right? Well, there is an evidentiary loophole that allows voluntary statements given in violation of Miranda to be usable in court for impeachment purposes. Think about this. Police officers made an agreement prior to interviewing the defendant that they would continue questioning the defendant even if he invoked his right to an attorney. So these officers got together and said, look, even if he asked for an attorney, just keep questioning him. Let's just see what happens. They knew that anything he said could not be used to prove his guilt. But anything he said could be used to impeach later testimony if he chose to testify. And so defendant requested a lawyer 11 times over the course of a four-hour investigation. But each time after requesting a lawyer, the police ignored his request and asked another question to which he answered. And then they resumed their questioning. He then later admitted a rape and double homicide to police. And this is before he saw a lawyer. Court found the defendant was not subjected to physical or psychological mistreatment and is mature and has had past criminal experience and that his statements were therefore voluntary and admissible as impeachment evidence. So they can't make their case using this stuff, but they can use it to impeach him if he testifies. And impeachment is, uh, in this case, not what we talk about with the president or, or people in, in office. When you get in the stand and you testify, and you, and you testify to something, If someone can bring up evidence that you're being untruthful, it's called impeachment evidence. And so prior inconsistent statements, for instance, are commonly used. A person testifies in court several occasions about something, and later they testify to the opposite. You can bring in this prior testimony usually to impeach the witness on the stand and say, today you're saying X. Previously you testified under oath, not X. Those are inconsistent, correct? Today you said this, previously you said the opposite, didn't you? Okay, that's it. Impeachment testimony. So again, they ignored his request for an attorney, but he, but he kept talking, and he may have actually thought, well, they can't use it against me. I've gotten a lawyer, and I've demanded one 11 times. So again, those are all examples of situations where the police can lie to you or mislead you. And here's the thing. What he says, and again, this is Nicholas Moore, False confessions happen with a surprisingly high degree of frequency. People will say things after being grilled for hours in uncomfortable circumstances by professional people who do nothing but grill people for a living. So he points out that, look, every case is fact-specific. Nothing here should be taken as legal advice. But the key is that nothing anybody says or do does will prevent the police from performing an illegal arrest. So the key is keep in mind that they're not there to help you. They're going to lie to you. And, and they're simply trying to solve a crime. And they don't care if they pin it on you or somebody else. They just want to pin it on somebody. So sit down, shut up, and wait till you get an attorney. And if you, if, you, if you feel inclined to say anything, say, I want an attorney. Then shut up. You're done. No matter what they say to you at that point, 
ignore it because they very well could be lying to you. So again, police will not help you. Only staying silent and waiting to speak to an experienced attorney will give you a fighting chance at winning your case. It'll be tempting to just give in and tell the police what you know because you think you may see a way out. You need to be vigilant. Even the most innocent things you say might be twisted or used against you. Uh, and so you're best off just shutting up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Demand an attorney. Shut up. And again, this is from attorney Nicholas J. Moore's website and his wonderful article about... Um, how the police can and will lie to you. And the article is, in fact, titled, Can the Police Lie to You? And the answer is, yes, they can. So there you go. I'll put the link below. Questions or comments otherwise? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.